And commercial real estate, man, you start off with one multifamily or one self-storage or one mobile home park, and then it's a rinse and repeat model. And like I said, the more knowledge that you gain and you continue to apply that knowledge, action causes reaction, mm. right? So you got to have enough motion to create action. And that's the difference, man. People think, okay, I got a little motion. I'm going to make it happen. No, 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 no. You got you to have the relentlessness for success. And that's, that's the real deal right there. Hey everyone, Jamel Gibbs here. Welcome to another podcast episode. Today we have a very special guest. Now I've known this guy. Uh, we've actually done a call, I want to say back in 2008, right when the real estate market was at rock bottom. Uh, our special guest was killing it in the commercial realm. And I know this to be uh, a fact. Uh, he was doing deals then. He's doing deals today. In fact, uh, we were just talking just a couple of minutes ago, and he was showing me some of the recent uh, types of deals that he's doing. We're talking about everything in the commercial realm, everything from uh, apartments to self-storage to you know, different aspects of the commercial uh, realm. He's killing it right now. And the best part is he's quick turning these. He's wholesaling these. And I'm sure he's holding on to some as well, which we'll talk about uh, as we go through uh, this podcast today. But this is definitely a seasoned investor. In fact, you know, uh, Terry, how long have you been in the business now? Gosh, I was, I've been in this business since 2003, which is some time, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. So right around the time when I started, I started back in 2002. The difference is you took the commercial uh wrote the commercial route and I took the, the residential route. But uh, yeah, man, uh, I, I'm looking forward to today's call. I'm looking forward to uh, our conversation. I know there's going to be a lot of uh, rock solid information for anyone looking to get into the commercial world. If you're in residential now and you're looking to make that transition over, it's going to be the perfect call for you. And we have a seasoned commercial investor on the call today. Welcome Terry Hill to the call. What's Thanks, up? man. The, yeah. <laughs> hold on, let me take that back, man. The real deal, Terry Hale. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Thanks, man. I appreciate the intro. I'm excited to be here too, man. You know, it's a it's a wonderful thing you're doing, man, and it's a, a great give back. And for uh, everybody that's uh, that's that's present, where if you're listening to this recording, the great thing about it is you can start right away in commercial. You can jump in. Um, there's all these misconceptions about commercial, like it's big and scary. And it's this business that, uh, that has uh, a lot of unknowns, a lot of numbers to crunch. Uh, you got to have a lot of capital. You got to have perfect credit, um, all this stuff, man. And uh, people always ask me, like, what kind of license do I have to have? And I always tell them I got two licenses. I got a mayor's license and a driver's license. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but I, I mean, <laughs> absolutely. There's no copyright on that, man. You can have it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, when I when I started off, uh, I'll just tell a little bit of my backstory because um, I do have a lot of experience in this business. And I know there's a lot of people out there talking a big game and that's fine, you know, but um, what I'm doing is something entirely different. And uh, I was crushing it uh, during a downturn cycle and I'm crushing it right now in this current timeline. And even when the market's super red hot, I'm still finding just, in, in just amazing opportunities. I mean, there's just an abundance of wealth and just so everybody's on the same page. And I, I love to say this, you know, it's our God given right to live life in abundance for all of us. I mean, it's, it's a fact and we have one life to live. So just do it and do it as fast as you can get successful and, and remain wealthy as fast as humanly possible. And commercial real estate has given me and all my clients that take action that same opportunity. So anyone can jump in, man. And, and what's so great is when I first started out, um, and there's nothing wrong with the house buying business. It's a great solid business too. If you can automate that process, like I know you have, and it does take a little grind, there's some work that goes into it. But if you have a systematic approach and it's a proven tactic and strategies you're using, great. This commercial stuff just enhances it. So it's really cool that you can jump into, uh, like let's call it a multifamily. And what I realized with my mindset is that real estate, it's all just a box, right? You got a house, you got a multifamily, you got a bunch of houses inside of it. I just showed, uh, showed you that picture of the uh, 15 fourplexes. So it's basically 15 fourplexes on eight acres. That's 60 units. So it's, um, it's refreshing when you take away that misconception and start thinking about it just as boxes. 
And uh, when you have all these units under one roof, then you just get, you know, more than one check. It's great because I know you guys like those checks, just like we all do, right? Um, oh, man. <laughs> no doubt. More checks, more money, man, more freedom. And uh, so when I started out, I jumped, uh, I did jump into commercial. I had some help from a wealthy person that uh, really showed me the ropes. And what they did was they, they showed me how to buy retail. And instantly I, uh, I hit the ceiling, meaning that my debt to income ratio got hit because I could only personally guarantee so much, so much debt. And I found out that that's really the wrong way to do it. So what I started doing was creative ways to either A, be able to negotiate these deals for rock bottom, deep discounts, and then use private capital to buy it or get seller finance terms. And then all the seller financing that I get when the actual owner, the distressed seller sells the property, they sell it to me on a non-recourse basis, meaning that your credit is totally irrelevant. So and it's crazy, but if I'm borrowing somebody else's money and I'm not using my credit, then that whole myth of credit and cash goes out the window. So now all of a sudden you just get a little comfortable. I got a little cocky early on and I started just ramping up, man. And uh, I started realizing that there's different types of distressed property. And through, I'd say, about five years of, of actually investing, um, I got introduced uh, to a gentleman, and I mentioned uh, the grand's name earlier, co-authored uh, a book with him, and, uh, and he taught me the information marketing sector. And I started putting my systems together. So I want to share what I refer to as the six steps of the deal. So everyone that's just starting out now or thinking about doing commercial, you can really absorb this information and I like to, I like to give a lot of value and a lot of meat on, on these podcasts and these types of calls too. So anytime you got a question, you can just grill me like an onion, man. I'm here. I know my stuff. So the six steps. Yeah. I was going to say one thing I, I, I would say Ron's a dinosaur in this man. So, and, and I, I recently had a call with him as well. He, uh, Ron's just fantastic, man. He, he's a straight up guy. And uh, I know when you, you said back in what, Oh four or three Oh four, you, you actually, wrote a commercial uh was it a book or a course or yeah so he uh it was kind of a crazy thing um i got uh, introduced to him and then uh from there he he said well i'm coming out to, to la because i reside out here in malibu and at the time uh, i was living in in another area of los angeles and he was doing an event uh, i think it was pasadena and, and uh he said why don't you come on i'll you know show you some stuff and we'll talk talk shop and everything so he goes but you got to buy me dinner so i ended up going to a hotel with him and uh, it was my wife, Lisa, was with me. I'm still the same, same lady since 1999. And um, Lisa and I sat down, and he literally had an old cassette-style tape, right, with tapes. We had a bunch of tapes. And he put it in there, and he just started talking. And we started talking through um, how to, you know, put a course together. And we created a course uh, called How to Find Hidden Deals in Commercial Real Estate because Ron was just cracking into commercial at that time. So it was really cool. And I have a lot of respect for Ron, and I, I love the man. So. Yeah. Yeah, man. So I've been, I've been, so he gave me the ability to get out and, and share this information. Um, you know, at one point you, you understand like you're teaching and doing get the give back thing, but then also if you're out there and you're just crushing it, like there's so much money to be made and there's only so much time in a day, in a week, in a month, in a year. So you gotta, you gotta go where the, where the money is and where, where, where you can actually, you know, create true wealth. And, uh, and I, of course, uh, uh came back at it here, um, really, really hard. Uh, I was kind of semi-retired and I came back at it really hard when I had my son and uh, he's turning seven next month. And I named him Cash. Of course, I named him Cash. What else would I name him? <laughs> but uh, cool. He's cool. There's a picture of him right there. There's, there's me, my wife, and my son, Cash, man. So oh, man, that's, that's a beautiful family, man. Yeah. Yeah. We're, I'm loving life, man. It's a really good thing. So, um, so for, for the whole give back thing and, and, and with, with what I was saying, just to summarize with, uh, with Ron, it's great because he gave me a gift to be able to share it with people. So when I put my, my strategies together, um, I follow a very strict uh, protocol of business. So there's six steps to it, if anybody's taking notes. But um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get out, we're going to go find that project. And once we find it, we're locating it using a certain formula. And the formula is really cool. Um, there's five things that we need to know just by finding a project that'll really get people comfortable with looking for commercial. And um, the first thing, obviously, is, is we look at the asking price due to the as-is value. That's number two. And we calculate the as-is value on its current net income stream. 
So when a property is pulling in a bunch of money, we call that the gross income, right? It's pretty basic. It's all the gross, right? That's all the money. Then we have itemized expenses, and then we end up with something called the net. That's the net operating income. I use something called a 10 cap formula. So I'll look at it and I'll times it by 10. So if the property's pulling in, let's say $40,000 net income, then the property's worth $400,000. If I can buy that property on a 10 cap and there's also room to fill it, meaning fill vacancies, raise rents, I can, I can take that property and I can double, triple, and sometimes quadruple my money. Because when I sell it, I'm selling it at a market cap, which is an aggressive cap at say, whatever that market cap may be, maybe a five cap, six cap, seven cap. So now I'm selling the property for a much higher value. So when I'm looking at the third thing um, is the future value, which is the R, which we all know the after repaired value. We just look at uh, dollar per square foot, apples to apples. So that's what it's gonna be worth in the future. Now I can raise the rents, I can fill those vacancies and I can achieve that higher number. Um, I know that, that the future value of the property is gonna be worth so much more. And then we also factor in for the repairs and then we also need to know what the loan amount is. And with those five things, we can find these properties that are, that are sitting there on websites, man, like LoopNet or Crexy or Argus for looking for storage or um, mobilehomeparkstore.com if you're looking for mobile home parks. And with this formula that I use, these properties are sitting and nobody else is moving on. Yeah. Just Let me ask you a question about that. So, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, even myself included, you know, I would go on a site like LoopNet. I, I'm an experienced real estate investor. Uh, there's a lot of people listening who may not be as experienced or maybe they're just getting started. Right. So you obviously you started right off the bat in commercial. Um, mm -hmm. When you go to sites like LoopNet, for example, and you have to talk to the broker, what are some of the things, what are some of the fears that people, uh, or some of the misconceptions that people have about sites like this, or what are some of the uh, fears that they may have to overcome in order to get the information that they're looking for, working with these types of brokers? Right, so, so negotiations are, are never with the broker. Um, the broker, um, and I respect our brokers, actually my guy to my left here in the office, Chris, he, he's actually a broker. Um, but you know, they're everyday people just like us, man. And they're going to vet you. And that's one of the things that a lot of these, these folks that start off, they're a little hesitant or they're feeling uncomfortable to jump on the phone. Like they're going to say the wrong thing. Or, or maybe if, if they're, if they're desperate or they're, um, not confident, then all of a sudden, you know, they feel like they have this fear, like the broker's going to grind them and say, you know, show me proof of funds, show me credibility, you know, show me your, your, your big list of projects that you've done. And if you're a newbie and you're just starting out, you don't have that credibility, right? Then all of a sudden you feel like, oh man, if I jump on the phone and say something wrong or, or if I do it wrong, then it's all going to fall apart. And maybe you feel embarrassed or, or you feel like there's not going to get any results. But the fact of the matter is brokers need sellers, man. I mean, excuse me, buyers. More than buyers need brokers. These brokers need us. And, you know, the, the purchase on this one deal, um, we tied it up for, what was it, Todd, 120000 120,000 and we're wholesaling it. We're asking right now 350 for it. So that's a, that's a smaller deal. It's a smaller play. But when, when the broker actually mentioned, um, Hey, can you guys provide a proof of funds? We kind of chuckled and said, is $120,000. Like really? Like, and, and, and at that point it kind of, if you come back at people, then people, they, they stop being so confrontational. You know, if you have confidence in, in your actions and you understand that you do have the ability to make it happen, whether it's your money or somebody else's, um, it, once, once they feel comfortable with you and you just get out of your skin, you're going to find that they're much more open to, you know, explaining uh, more details about the deal and just turn the conversation around. You got to take control of the conversation, you know, and I find that that helps out a lot, man. Love it, man. Love it. Very thorough, man. Uh, that, that's actually probably the best uh, response that, you know, our listeners are going to get. You got to take control of the conversation, take control of the situation, just as if you were talking with, uh, a motivated seller on a residential side. If you control the conversation and you control, then you control everything else that goes on in a deal as well. Love that, man. Yeah. So like, for instance, if I ever get any resistance, I just throw it back at them, man. I'm like, okay, let me test this. Let me test this broker and see if they did their homework. Right. So I'll say, okay, can you tell me what the unit mix is? Right. So unit mix is like, if you're working with multifamily, it's going to be, you know, three bedroom, two bath, maybe you'll have 10 of those. And then you'll have, you know, five, two bedroom, one baths like that, right. In a studio with a half bath or whatever have you. Um, 
So ask them, what's the unit mix? And what's the dollar per square foot for each unit mix? You start asking questions like that, man. And as far as the itemized expenses, what is it, what's the insurance look like per year on this deal? And you start kind of throwing it back at and grinding back on them. Then all of a sudden, man, <laughs> they're looking at you and they're saying, whoa, I need to get this information together, right? And get this to this, uh, to this potential buyer. So yeah. he, knows, great. he knows his stuff. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, um, just to wrap up on the six steps, so when I find and I'm looking for those five things that I had mentioned, which was the asking price, the as is, the after repaired value, the loan, and also the repairs. Once I know those five things, then we can find the deal. So my six steps are finding, pre-screening, evaluating, structuring, negotiating, and facilitating. So we have this protocol that we play. Can't tell you how many times I said that, man. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but the protocol that we have for, for understanding these deals, when we, when we locate, all of a sudden we have a trained eye and we say, okay, this makes sense. Then it's worthy of a call. The problem people have with commercial, man, is they, they look at these deals and they jump on the phone and it's, it's premature and it's uneducated because they're just asking questions. And without knowing those five things, like if I didn't know the loan amount, for instance, right? As we mentioned, the five things, if I didn't know what that, that guy's or gal's loan amount was on the, on the property, like how much they owe, and all of a sudden, I, and they're asking a million dollars for the property, and I ask them to carry paper, and I say, I just want to put down 10%, and, and, and all of a sudden, their, their, their loan is actually going to balloon in 12 months, and I'm asking them to carry for, for 60 months, which is five years, they're going to say no, and then all of a sudden, you're going to be like, oh, man, this stuff doesn't work. No, it's not that it doesn't work. You forgot to get the right intel up front. Like you got to go through your discovery. You got to ask some questions. That's part of the pre-screening process, right? And then you got to evaluate it and say, okay, what am I going to do on this property? Like what's, what's, what are the numbers have to look like? How do I have to buy it? What's the future value going to look like? Like all these things come into play. Then once you have that information, it's typically round two or round three on a phone call with a broker or seller. At that point on, on call two or three, then what we can do is actually have enough information to have an intelligent conversation. Then we go ahead and lay it on and we, we tell them the terms that we want. Man, we're orchestrating our terms. The longest seller financing I've ever gotten was 29 years. 29 years seller finance. How's that possible? The guy buys and sells notes. He's a broker slash investor. He, he's going to sell the note anyway. So it's advantageous for him to say, hey, you know what? I'll do a 29 year note because now I got this, I got this cash cow that's going to continue pay over 29 years and he's able to go and sell the note. And that was non recourse. I got in on that deal. Um, it was a uh, $1,395,000 purchase. I got in for 3% down. That's $53,000 down. I remember the numbers wow. and uh, that property pull, I still own it. It pulled in a little over 36,000 last month and it's all on autopilot. It's all on autopilot. My client and I, we, we split the property 50-50 and um, been loving life on that deal. Her name's Christy that owns that. So um, we own it together. And uh, it's a great thing, man. It's a really good thing. Commercials, commercials, a very, very powerful tool. Yeah, commercials, where is that, man? So literally within a month and a half, you have your entire down payment back. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's well, we, had a process. We, had, we had a process where we had to ramp that up because it had vacancy. So we didn't get the money back right away. But in, in hindsight, I mean, what that property is worth today, it's worth close to, you know, I'd say just shy of $4 million Ooh. on one deal. I mean, and when you're talking $53,000 or like the purchase on the deal that we have under contract right now, out, it's uh, out of uh, Chicago suburbs. I mean, that property, $120,000 purchase and that deal's all cash. So I'm just wholesaling it. So, he talked, he grabbed my book for me, the one over there, if you don't mind. Um, That's sick, man. So $53,000 control a $4 million, pe uh, $4 million piece of property. Can't go wrong. Yeah. Crazy, right? <laughs> That's really yeah. ridiculous. I, uh, I, this, this, this is a, a book that I, um, that I authored. It's a self-published book. Um, I don't have it for, for sale or anything like that. I'm just sharing the, the name of it with you. Um, the two best strategies to profit with commercial real estate, right? Um, I authored that book just as a, as a give back at one time. It's actually out of publication. I just had one in my office. But the two best strategies, what are those two strategies, right? Because there is two strategies that I use that, uh, that makes uh, this business, makes sense of this business. Um, and you mentioned it earlier, you know, sometimes I'm wholesaling, sometimes I'm keeping. So the deals that actually, and I wanna, wanna talk about this is real important because of this timeline that we're in right now, right? Because people are like, should, I, should we invest right now? Like, 
what am I watching, right? What, who, who am I listening to? Like, are you telling me to invest or not to invest? Is now a good time? Or should I wait? What's happening? Well, my crystal ball's in the shop. You know, I, I can't predict the future, right? <laughs> but, but common sense, which sometimes isn't so common, just says that the market's going to snap back. And, and the market's always cyclical. Just from the downfall we talked about, you know, in, in the, the 08 issue, you know, we, we all came back strong. But imagine if you had, you know, a time machine and you could zip back like 20 years and buy all the commercial real estate that you could and you zip back to today, right? There's, there's, there's literally four reasons to keep property. And I'm talking about the two strategies right now. One is to wholesale and one's to keep. Why do we keep it? Uh, we keep it for cash flow, depreciation, same reason why you own a house, appreciation, right? And then to refinance and cash out. So we can take these properties, buy them in a distressed state where there's tons of vacancy and the rents are really low and there's no profit centers. It's not modernized. It's not automated. Um, you still have a manager looking after the deal. Um, with technology today, we change all of that. And when I buy property, man, I do away with the manager at say a $30,000 on average uh, a management fee and that adds on a 10 cap, a $300,000 value play to my property. It just instantly, once I automate it, and it costs me on average for a storage facility, on average 15 grand to automate it. That's, a, that's an actual automated gate, automated control panel that, that's uh, hardwired uh, to a box that's on Wi-Fi that actually talks to a third party. The third party handles marketing, management, collections. It's all automated and modernized. And uh, that even includes... Um, um, them uh, sending out all the all the collections, uh, letters, and everything else, and that expense—it's crazy, man. It's on average five thousand dollars a year. That's it. Wow. Five grand. A year. So, so, so this is the first time I'm I'm actually hearing about something like this. Um, <laughs> you're actually automating your entire commercial business. Yeah, yeah. automating it. I, I haven't heard anybody talk about that. Yeah, I don't talk about it too much, man. <laughs> my guys here in the office are like, shh. <laughs> I got it, man. This, he's my man, and I got to do some give back, man. So it just, that's pretty what sick, it is. man. So, <laughs> you know, I hear it a lot in the uh, residential realm. You know, automate this and automate that, but no one talks about automating their commercial business. So that's, yeah, you know, man, hands that's off. That's some that's some killer stuff right there, man. So, yes. so let's talk about um, if someone's just getting started right now. Let's say, you know, I'm not sure what your situation was when you first started, but let's just say, for example, someone doesn't have the, the best credit or not a lot of capital uh, to invest at the moment. What, what would you recommend that type of person do? I would say just, you know, get, get educated as much as you can, you know, um, and, uh, and tread water lightly if you're going to do it on your own because uh, Latin, which is caveat emptor, which stands for buyer beware, Commercial is not a full disclosure business, and I don't mean that to scare anybody. It's not, it's not a scary business at all. You just need to know exactly what your entry is and what your exit is. And you can have multiple exits with commercial. You can always wholesale it uh, if you write it up in the correct manner where you can assign it. So at any point in time, if somebody wants to walk, walk up and say, hey, I'll buy this from you. Like I did a, I did a deal. I, I showed it to you, the one in St. Augustine, Florida. I tied it up for 480000 I did a seven-year seller finance note at 4% interest. Uh, that was principal and interest on a 30-year amortization schedule. And um, the property was sitting at 80% uh, physical occupancy, but was only operating at 40% economic occupancy. So all these people just had their stuff in there, but the manager that was sitting in the box watching TV every day wasn't doing his job. And every time somebody would come in with cash, he'd put it in his pocket. So when I bought the property, I was able to cancel out the manager. Um, I did, I did my, my modernization, hooked it up, I automated it, and I had an offer for $900,000 come in the door. I only own the thing. Uh, I was in the Jacksonville Business Journal. I only owned the thing for uh, six months and uh, ended up selling it um, and cashing in, you know, the difference between, you know, 480 to 900,000 minus a little bit of a principal reduction uh, off the monthly payments. But, uh, but my, my point being is that for that particular deal, um, they were able to take over the seller finance note because they, they, uh, they just stepped in my shoes. Like I just transferred the note to them. So they didn't have to come in with the full 900. And that's a beautiful thing. So when people are starting off here, and the reason why I gave that example uh, to support your question is because you don't have to have your own capital. Like I didn't put a red cent into that deal. That was borrowed money for the down payment, right? 
And um, I put down $100,000 on that deal and I borrowed that capital and I paid, it, I paid interest on that capital. Um, it was 8% interest. Um, everything that I do is structured as non-recourse, which means no personal guarantee. So when you sign your name, you're signing on behalf of an LLC and you're not ever giving a personal guarantee. There's no credit check. It doesn't matter what your FICO score is, that three digit number, right? It doesn't matter. And the reason why I structured things that way is because I was the guy that, that, that went down that, that you know, gravel pitted road and got the cups, the bumps and the bruises because my debt to income ratio got hit, remember? Because I went in there and I personally guaranteed a bunch of debt and then the banks, they said, hey, all your deals look great, but guess what, we're not loaning you any money. And I said, why? And they go, because you don't have enough income. And I said, but I got all this income. They go, yeah, but you got all that debt because your debt to income ratio. And that happens to people that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars that over leverage and they hit the ceiling. Happens all the time to people in business. And that's why a lot of times businesses go bankrupt because they continue to, you know, beg and borrow. And then all of a sudden they can't borrow anymore and they're over leveraged. So doing my business, you're never over leveraged. And everything that I do is all done in empty shell LLC. So I don't cross collateralize. I don't commingle funds. Everything's done in a fresh LLC and I do them in state specific like Nevada and Wyoming for anonymity, which means that I remain anonymous on every single entity. So for all you people, I don't own real estate. My companies do, Control. right? Absolutely. So if, God forbid, I get into a fender bender, right? And, uh, and I feel bad for the guy who hits, hits the super truck though. I just got an F-250 lifted up six inches with big old 33 inch tires on the thing. It's crazy. It's super sweet. <laughs> it's, it's a big bad boy. Um, but yeah, God forbid I get into a fender bender um, and somebody, and it's an attorney, and the attorney doesn't have to rack up a bill because they're an attorney, and then they try to come after me and sue me for everything that I own. Guess what? I don't own anything. Personal homes are in trusts. Everything else is through entity structuring, through anonymity. So just doing business the right way and self-educating yourself, getting the knowledge, then applying the knowledge. Knowledge is not power. We all know that. Knowledge is useless if you don't use it. So you got to harness knowledge for everybody. You apply that knowledge and you got to use, you got to use the right strategies and techniques. I know there's a lot of people squawking saying they're doing a lot of big things out there and I get it, but you know, I guess, what do they say? Proof is in the pudding, right? And that if you're doing the deals the right way and you have proof and everything's rocking and, uh, and you got a great, a great, you know, head on your shoulders and you're doing it, then you just continue to do what works. If it doesn't work, do something else. That's, that's what I always say. And for everybody that's listening in, man, I appreciate you having me here because I really want to let everybody know that you have, you have full ability to do this business. All of you do. And, and all you got to do is just, you know, like I said, just, just tread water lightly until you know exactly what you're doing. But once you get it, it's not rocket science, man. And no, you know what? The, it's really the, the hardest, actually really hardest part right there is getting started. That's it. Getting started. And in my opinion, I think a residential business could be quite – uh, could sometimes be a little bit difficult because you got you do have a little competition from, from folks that are out there. That's all. But I, I like the residential business. I think it's cool. You know, people have that and it's a systematic approach and they're doing it. Um, great. You know, commercial just, it helps. You know, it helps. It brings in more money. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of the stuff that you, you spoke about and you know, some of that stuff you can't do in the residential business. It, it's just not, it's not going to work. But there's certain things that you can do in the commercial world that you can't do in residential. Uh, but all of this boils down to being creative thinkers and just kind of thinking outside the box in order to be able to get the end result of what it is that you want to accomplish in your business. That's all it is. And just, then just getting started. You know, so yep. um, it, it's, not, it's not difficult at all. Terry just gave you a six-step process. Um, if you didn't catch that, listen to it again. You know, re rewind this uh, podcast uh, or this video and listen to it again. Catch what he said, you know, because it's really simple at the end of the day. All you have to do, you have the steps he just provided for you. All you have to do is get out there and, and, and take the action in, in order to get the, uh, the, the end result that you want. But just talking with you on, on today's podcast has me thinking personally that this doesn't take a lot of brain power either. So uh, No, it doesn't, man. It doesn't. It's just that the thing is, man, you just got to do it. And you got to stay, you know, you got to stay in front of it. Um, it moves, commercial can move fast. There's a lot of big money in it. But what's crazy, man, is the growth that's there. And, and you become like a mad scientist. Like mm -hmm. my guys and I, we sit around and 
We're, we sit at this big metal desk. We sit around. We just we do deal flow every day. And we just looked at like four deals this morning. And we're just we're looking at deal flow. And we whack them. We don't feel bad about them. There's no emotion, you know. And then here's what's so cool too. I want to share this with everybody because it is important. And I'm not downplaying residential at all because I know that that was your game for a very long time, and it's totally cool. And I support it. But you know. In commercial, there's two sides of a piece of paper. You have an asset or you have a liability. And if you have an asset, that's something that's producing a lot of income, and then they're selling it at retail price, right? So obviously, when you look at that, you, if you try to purchase that deal, it's going to be too skinny. There's not enough meat on the bone, right? When you're looking at a liability, that means that it's got, it's got a situation happening, whether it's the property's distressed or the individual's distressed. We just looked at one this morning that's an inheritance property. When these properties are, are neglected, then all of a sudden the occupancy is either low or what happens is the rents are really low or there really isn't any love being put into the property, right? It's just neglected. So we can buy these properties for deep discounts, get creative terms, and that's what we're really looking for is identifying these liability type of properties. But like, like I said, man, you become like this mad scientist. You start, they start having like these, you know, these premeditative thoughts, like when you're negotiating. Like when I negotiate a deal, I'm like, Hey, would you do 10 year seller financing? They're like, no, 10 years is too long. Why? Like, look, if, if, if I pay you out right now, you're going to have to pay all this capital gains. Like, haven't you ever wanted to own a bank before? Like you're, you're basically the bank. Like you just have monthly income every single month. And, and once they start realizing this, then we negotiate. And even if I don't get it for the right price, I played on their greed and I'll do something called an escalation of interest. So after I carry it for longer term, like my first three years, I'll do like, you know, either interest only or like 4% interest. And then all of a sudden I'll let them know, okay, now on your five, your six, your seven, your eight, and as we keep going, I'll pay more interest. So then they, they start thinking, oh, I'm going to make all this money. But then what I do is I reposition it. And then I call them up and I say, hey, you know what? I know we have another nine years left on this deal, but I just talked to a lender and they're willing to cash me out right now. How, how, and maybe I own a million dollars. I'm like, look, I could have $705,000. That's my number, $705,000 in your account in the next 72 hours. Either that or I'll talk to you in nine years. What do you want to do? And they always take it. So they'll give me discounts and that plays into that. That's a that, huge discount. That's a, that's a great play to get a uh, huge discount. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, man. That was, that's some killer stuff right there. Yeah, man. What you're doing is you're, you're making them an offer. Essentially, you're not getting involved with any of your own money, uh, providing them with interest only for a year, then just reposition the loan after one year. To get yeah, man. Take the paper from one side of the table, move it over to the other side, man. That's all we're doing, <laughs> right? Come on, man. You got you to join in. <laughs> yeah, man. Bring your people with you. But uh, like you said, man, the hardest part is just getting started, man. Yep. So Terry, man, um, how you know? I know you're uh, you're you're uh, a book reader. I'm sure um, everyone who's successful has some type of education behind them. Uh, what do you? Are you currently reading anything right now? Nah, right now because of this current situation and my seven year old not uh, being he's being homeschooled, and uh, I of course I could have a nanny or a, or a caretaker, but my wife and I are extremely hands on mm -hmm. um, because of that. Um, I'm reading, uh, uh, you know, books like Fly Guy and uh, <laughs> little kid books. Those are the books that I'm really into. But I mean, everybody, everybody, uh, if, if you could, I, I would say if you're going to get out there and, and look to do this business, I would just say just reprogram your mind to be positive. I think that's the most, the best message that I could give everybody. And, and we, all, we all can get in a situation, we we'll call it a rut or call it, um, you know, just, just repetition of the same thing. It becomes just just monotonous. We're just sitting there in the same thing every single day. And what you want is change, right? Yeah. So I see you just need to like reprogram your mind. Um, I, I had to do that at one point because I wanted to get back into doing things. I wanted to be positive. I wanted to get the right message. So I just went back to the good old Napoleon Hill Think and Grow Rich, man. Every time I read that book, I just get richer. I mean, it's crazy. Going along with it, right? <laughs> man, if you don't believe in yourself, no one's going to believe in you. I'm a beautiful person. I, I love myself. I truly do. And, uh, and I give respect to everybody. And, and I just, I think that that really, it radiates. People want to be around people that are positive. So I would just, that's yeah. the best, best, you know, best push I could give everybody is just, you got to be positive in this business. You know, you got to be positive. Work and, on uh, mindset, man. I, I love that, man. I 100% I, I agree with that. 100%. One, one question I do have, uh, yep. how long would it normally take the, uh, the average, well, let's just say a brand new investor to 
uh, and obviously this is based off of you know their work ethic and things like that how long would it usually take for, for someone to go out there and find a deal and should they be looking nationwide or local first yeah no great question man I always say um, you know fish in your own hole first that you know that that, that what's going on there right um, that's really important and then start going outward just do some very uh, simple uh, uh, tactics like know, know the good markets. Um, it, the, power, the internet is such a powerful tool. Like it's very easy to find appreciating markets. Stay out of areas that have low population. Look in areas that have within a three mile radius, you've got 30,000 plus people, right? So that's, that's regardless of storage or multifamily, RV parks, mobile home parks, whatever you happen to look at um, for sure. Um, we have a, uh, how long did, uh, did Randy and Darla there? Less than 60 days. Less than 60 days. Um, they located a property. Uh, we ended up uh, wholesaling it. Uh, we got paid and now they're on their second deal already. Third, third deal. Third project. I have a gal, Christy, she's done, here, here's a good, here's a good statistic. She's done 10 projects in a track of land with me in 23 months. That's like a seven and a half million dollar portfolio. That's sick. Yes. So. And then there's people that do nothing because they, like you said, they lack, they lack that, uh, that work ethic, you know, um, Barnes and Noble posted that the average person that buys a book off the shelf, um, is a victim of never reading it cover to cover. I know I've done that. I purchased books off the shelf and never read them cover to cover because you're busy, but you feel good when you buy it, right? You're like, Oh, I got this book and I'm going to read it. And you have good intentions and it feels good. But then if you don't read it cover to cover, yeah, man, you don't read it cover to cover, then there it is, you know? So, so if people stick at it and get it done and they, they, they actually make the calls and then they follow up on the calls and they follow up again, I'm not saying there's a, there's, there's a magic pill, right? A red pill for self-storage and a blue for apartments. It's no such thing. There's some work that goes into this, but the results are absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you can build serious wealth. You know what's so funny? It's the same concept with residential. You're putting in the same amount of work. But mm -hmm. the reward on the other end is just phenomenal, man. It's a lot, a lot, a lot bigger with the mm -hmm. world. Now, obviously, you're the real deal, man. You want to show your team? We're, uh, we're Terry's yeah. in the office right now. Here's a guy who's actually doing it. There's the team. Got Margarita. Got Todd. He's, yeah, man. Killing it in his, uh, in his market. He's killing it in multiple. Killing it. You mentioned, so Oklahoma. <laughs> you mentioned Oklahoma. You mentioned, you mentioned multiple multiple uh markets there man i love it i love uh talking to people who are the real deal but you're the real deal with terry hell man i love that name too man <laughs> <laughs> you got the sticker for me todd uh, i'll show you the, i'll show you our new podcast sticker before we go because i got to share it with you uh, flip it around. Cool, man. check this out real quick one two three here it is the real deal Real, Real deal, Terry Hale. <laughs> I love it. To the dollar bills. <laughs> Those are hundies. When's the podcast? Uh, obviously, is it open now? Is it up now? It's, it's going to be launched within a week. It'll be up and rolling. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, man. Yeah, Check we're rolling. Guys, uh, Terry, uh, it's the Real Deal, Terry Hale. Uh, is it, I'm sure it's going to be on all major platforms. Yeah. Um, and how else uh, could our listeners get in contact with you as well? Yeah, man. I encourage anybody who is interested in learning more about what I'm doing. Um, you know, obviously, I, uh, I I have a website, which is my name, which is Terry Hale, T E R Y H A L E um, dot com, right here, Terry Hale, Terry Hale dot com, and you can go there. You can see projects on there. Um, we have a commercial property buyers list that you can join if you're looking to just buy commercial property. Um, the podcast will be announced on there. You'll see my team on there. And um, yeah, man, we're just, we're just over here having a great time, you know, and uh, doing business and making a lot of money. And like I was telling you earlier, uh, we did over, what was it close to 800,000 within the last, uh, you know, 45, 60 days. Um, and uh, I'm an open book, man. So I like to share deals with people. I like to show them exactly what I'm doing and how they can get, get it going too. Awesome. Listen, guys, you want to get started in commercial, you know, like I said, I, I've, I've personally uh, known Terry since, you know, we're talking 2007, 2008, when I started my education platform. Uh, he was getting started right around the same time. Uh, and ironically, we both started investing around the same time. Again, two different avenues, two different investors. But uh, I will say Terry's definitely the real deal. You know, I've always uh, taken a liking to him even uh, 12 years ago when we did our first call for one of my uh, one of my education programs back then it was awesome but uh 
definitely the real deal. You want to uh, uh, check Terry out at terryhell.com. And uh, also check out his podcast uh, on all major platforms. And um, I'm sure you guys are going to gain a lot of value out of it. So uh, any last words for our listeners, Terry? Yeah, man. I mean, uh, I always say that the road to Sunday leads to the town of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So if you have a definitive plan of action and you utilize the right strategies and techniques, like I said, it's your God-given right to live life in abundance. And that's the true fact, man. And, and you have one life, so live it good. And just get out there and, and know what you want. So many times, Jamal, people, they don't know what they want. Yeah. And, and if you just write it down and just tell yourself what it is that you want to achieve, and it's not like a pipe dream. It's just something that you can, you can achieve it. And, and you can do it. And commercial real estate, man, you start off with one multifamily or one self-storage or one mobile home park, and then it's a rinse and repeat model. And like I said, the more knowledge that you gain and you continue to apply that knowledge, action causes reaction, mm. right? So you got to have enough motion to create action. And that's the difference, man. People think, okay, I got a little motion. I'm going to make it happen. No, 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 no. You got you to have the relentlessness for success. And that's, that's the real deal right there. So right. I encourage everybody to just do it, man. Get started. Love it, man. Listen, guys, at the, at the end of the day, I know you guys hear it all the time. One deal can change your life. But in commercial, one deal can really change your life. So uh, if you, the same amount of effort you're going to put into getting your first residential deal, consider doing some commercial stuff. Contact Terry at terryhale.com and check out his podcast as well. Learn as much as you can and take massive action in order to get massive results.